All right, all right. Hello, everyone, and now welcome to a patch review of, well, Warcraft Arc Light Rumble. And at the very, very first thing on the to-do list, it is no longer Warcraft Arc Light Rumble. It is now just Warcraft Rumble. Arc Light, apparently not a popular word. A lot of people didn't even know what it meant. Um, arc Light actually refers to that weird lightning arc energy that is used to power a lot of gnome devices um, that you see. I guess it's that little, uh, little bit of a lightning that you see in the background there. Anyways, let's go ahead and break down into this 1.00 patch. I was waiting um, to try and gain a beta access once again to um, Warcraft Rumble before reading through the patches to see what was really changed. But after a week and a half without any way to download the game, I thought I'd look over this, look at the changes, read them to you, and give you my feedback as a player who has been um, while well, playing in very early in the alpha and and you just getting some feedback there now what many players think of Warcraft Rumble as the game there's the game and then there's also the game within the game what the minis um, uh, the unlocking of the minis the talents working together with your teammates traversing across the map that is a, a game within the game now I'm, I'm i have a feeling that the game itself placing down minis having them march across the field the tactical the strategy all of that is perhaps uh, most likely unchanged the game within the game is the challenges that they are going to be putting um, on the map heroic challenges i hear uh, balancing of those minis how you unlock minis how you make them stronger and and things of that nature and um, after playing the warcraft uh, warcraft rumble alpha for a long time it started to feel kind of stale and lonely um, you played it you had fun and then well you kind of just like stopped playing unless you had this itch to try and complete everything and level up everything and um, that that carrot was just didn't wasn't very rewarding so i'm wondering what the game within the game what updates they made as I read through these patch notes. So um, one first thing that I, I see right off the bat, guilds, um, the, making sure that the game doesn't feel lonely, being able to play with um, other online friends or friends you know in real life. The fact that you can have an invite only status as well, that was a very big deal. I know a lot of um, guilds that I was a part of, we tried to make it that you had to be part of a Discord group and you had no way of managing the community. You couldn't kick anyone out and then people would just join your group and you would max out and you'd try to create another another guild, get everyone there to try and work together and then some random person would drop in, take a spot and well, yeah. So quality of life improvements, membership controls, icons have been added, guild chat changed overall, that's great. And now rewarding for guilds. There is this war chest as a new guild feature that allows you to work with your friends to reap seasonal rewards. So um, that's actually a great thing. It Warcraft Rumble, it felt like you were playing in a bit of a vacuum. And you were playing by yourself, you would talk with people occasionally, but it was it was pretty much one of those things where well, you you just felt like you were you were just you know playing a solo player game. It it unless you were doing PvP, and even then you were often going up against bots as well. Probably something that will get addressed and fixed as more players start playing the game. But yeah, uh, PvP seasons. Um, there's war chest seasons that are uh, war chest events that are six week long, and war chests have a reward track for each family. Um, you, well, we need to figure out what f what family means. Um, I think family stands for like the racial class, like the undead class, the beast class, the black iron, uh, uh, the alliance, and the horde uh, horde families. I think is what they're talking about there. You can't really call them racial uh, race classes because the alliance has both humans and and night elves and, and things like that but we'll talk about that later as well as a reward track for your overall progress each arc light surge so arc light is still part of it it will reward 30 crests these crests don't really mean um anything to me right now so you're it's it's some sort of 
currency that lets you buy more things. But um, as long as you're able to earn things and those things feel rewarding, um, that's much better than how things were set up earlier. PVP crests are also awarded per family. So, uh, all right. So yeah, it's, it's starting to sound like family is that racial class that we were talking about early PVP family crush from PVP are awarded at 200 honor increments. Um, n not quite as you progress, for example, if rent already has already gained 36 black rock crest from getting to 5,200 honor darkish will not claim 36 crest from getting to 52. He would need to reach 54. Okay. So it is, yeah. So it is once per family. So in this instance, if you didn't know Rend and Drac Kisseth, I'm, I'm pr sure I'm butchering the, these names. I'm more of a War, uh, War, uh, Warcraft 3 fan. So I don't know all of the lore and world of Warcraft, but these two, um, these two units share the Blackrock crest. Um, which I believe is part of the same family um, going back to that racial class. So unlocking the terminology here, it, maybe it will make more sense as I am playing. But right now, reading through these patch notes, it feels like I, I need to know what's going on inside the game. And I'm making some inferences as well. Family rewards are granted at 2,000, 4,000, and 6,000. Overall progress rewards are granted at 10, 20, and 30. All right. So very very nice so so you get when as your honor goes up you also get some crests but it is you know locked within that family all right formerly skulls or skull road the path of anixia is a measure of your progress through the game unlock okay starting earning anixia path of anixia will unlock game modes like pvp arclight surge dungeons and more additional rewards like leader and troop choices are also available to connect collect um that doesn't feel like it changed at all um it, it's Blizzard's way of how, um, teaching you how to play the game, right? It's it's one of those things where back in the day, in the 80s, like there were instruction manuals that came with your video games to try and teach you how to play. But perhaps one of the best instruction or teaching you how to play was the very first Mario Brothers, where you, you would go in and you would and monsters would come, the little Goomba would come and it would teach you, oh, you need to jump here. So you jump and then you're like, oh, wait, I jump and maybe I should jump again to get this block. And then you would run and then you have to jump over this little chasm, but there was there was ground underneath. If you accidentally fell in, you know, you just jump back out and you go over that chasm again. The next chasm has a hole. So it's a way of teaching you how to play the game by playing the game. And that's what Path of Anixia is doing here. Now, um, Path of Anixia, um, if you didn't, if it was too easy for you, you can go ahead and try the heroic campaign, which um, basically says, hey, if the normal campaign is too easy, and th this is where I, I feel like their wording is kind of confusing. Campaign here, I believe, ties back to Path of Anixia or form or Skulls or Skull Road, right? Um, yeah, so an, an, another one of those things, if you're not sure or the nomenclature isn't quite locked down, I believe that is the case based on my experience through the game, but I really don't know for sure. I really wanted to try and download and play it. Uh, unfortunately, I am currently outside the regions um, that are able to gain access, and apparently my email hasn't been whitelisted yet to try and download, so still waiting. All right, so heroic campaign here, campaign too easy, um, more 50 widgets that you can earn. I'm just going to call them widgets or currency. 50 currencies you can earn. Heroic motions are 10 level higher than their campaign difficulty. Uh, all right, so interesting. Okay, so when I, when you were pl when I played the previously, if you went back to a former level, the the campaign actually would almost level up the troops again. So it wasn't like a simple like walk in the park where if you play World of Warcraft, you go back to Elwyn Forest as a level 60 and you just, you know, you bump into a mob and it dies. Um, that's that's not what's happening here. Um, what it, uh, What's happening is it sounds like with the Path of Anixia or the normal campaign, 
the units stay the same level, and the next time you visit them on Heroic, they are also 10 levels higher. But by beating them at 10 levels higher than their campaign difficulty, you gain extra currencies, and there are extra challenges on top of that. So Heroic Missions will grant rewards for winning with each family. So, okay, so, oh, that's interesting. So back, um, so, and there, it gives you a reason to go back and play with every single family or every, yeah, every single family. Just, it seems like they're consistent with that nomenclature with every single family. And it was something that was introduced in the, in the first version of the campaign, except their levels might change after you beat it the first time. Our conquest has been removed and replaced with heroic mode. All right mini rarity and star points all right minis now have an additional growth track rarity so um, this was something that i saw some pictures of but i'm not quite sure how it works um before the gotcha machine or that little three by three vending machine you would choose a mini that you wanted to buy and from there um so minis have reduced 350 for a troop and 400 for a leader to 90 for a troop and 120 for a leader it um, the cost of troops and minis does that. That seems like a very, very substantial drop, but uh, just I guess it's so that you can just unlock it, so that you can get it. Now minis also come with a rarity. So um, before you were just unlocking Jaina, unlocking Uther, unlocking the Huntress, un unlocking the Shaman. Now you unlock it for a lower count, but then you can also increase its rarity. Um, not. Um, there's got to be some sort of gameplay mechanic probably tied to the rarity as well. If it was just, I'm assuming if it was just for appearances, it probably wouldn't make that big of a difference. So minis can be upgraded with star points, arc energy, and upgrade cores. So m multiple currencies to upgrade your rarities. These can be earned, from, okay, through different ways. Minis can show up in the grid as common, uncommon, rare, or epic. Each rarity beyond common will grant you a bonus level to your mini. Um, uncommon, rare, and epic will unlock talent slots one, two, three for each mini. Okay, collection level, formerly player level, will now increase. It now increases every five mini rarity instead of twenty mini levels. All right, talent costs have been reduced from five hundred to two hundred. All right, so not only do you have to unlock a talent. So in the previous way, you, you could get a mini, and then once you had that mini, you can unlock a talent for that mini for 500 gold. It would increase its level, and it would have additional effect of some sort. Um, Huntress had, had the ability to uh, bounce an extra three times for that glaive or deal more damage on the first hit. Uh, Shamans had the ability to grant armor to its the first allied mini or turn its attack into um, um, into a chain chaining attack, I believe. Things of that nature. So um, really, those talents uh, were really really what gave identity and uniqueness even when you saw a mini marching down the map you weren't quite sure what talent it had and how it was being played and and it gives a, a little bit more depth to your your mini stack or your depth or your deck stack overall dungeons have received a significant upgrade to encourage you to play all the leaders in your collection instead of just your highest level leader this was this was something that was drastically needed in the dungeon aspect before you, you, as you're progressing through the game, you naturally have one leader that becomes stronger than the rest of your, than the rest of your decks. Because of that, you would play it with your strongest leader, and then the dungeon level would increase. And then if you try to play it with a weaker leader, you just got stomped. Like dungeon levels or or the level of the dungeon, trying to play anything under level becomes very difficult, and you just got stomped on so it's so from here it appears the dungeon yeah dungeon levels are now set per leader so say you beat the dungeon at level 13 with uther and you have a, a and you have a level 10 dracus if you go back and play it with dracus it may start at level 9 and then may push to level 10 and then push to a level 11 so there's more repeatable play value 
um, built into the game and rewards for that for that repeating. So Valor has been removed as a currency. All right. So Valor's Valor was one of the currencies that has been removed. Um, it's got to be replaced with dungeons begin at level five and each layer will earn an army upgrade immediately upon completing a dungeon all right once a leader defeats the dungeon the level of the extension will be one level higher makes sense arc energy is awarded for each boss defeated in a dungeon and partial progress uh, will reset each week this allows you to earn arc energy each week regardless of fully clearing a dungeon each level provides more arc energy than the last all right nice each week, dungeons will feature a specific family to gain rewards, creating 20 unique combinations of dungeon and family. All right. During a dungeon run, players will now only be offered relics that affect at least one mini in their army. Um, this is this is important here. Uh, so as you're progressing through the dungeon, as you're playing it, in between each stage, they gave you three options, three choices to um, that work only for the rest of the dungeon to make your your mini stack stronger. Unfortunately, sometimes you would get th uh, things like, um, oh, here is an option: your stealth units deal, you know, double damage coming out of stealth, t additional two x damage coming out of stealth, and you're like, okay, that's great. I have no stealth units. This doesn't help me at all. So you, you kind of kind of got pigeonholed into like, well, this one is the most helpful and you know, the most helpful relic that will help me here. So glad that they fixed that up. Um, what's important about game choices is that it's an actual choice. If it feels like there's only one choice, one good choice, it doesn't really feel like a choice at all. It feels like, hey, are you testing my intelligence on whether I want double stealth damage in a deck that doesn't have stealth, double healing, um, double healing in a deck that doesn't have healing, or, or you know, squad members bonus when I don't have squads or healing. Well, I'll take healing. Now, um, PvP do is getting some improvements. All right, so there's new maps that um, you know we'll see how that plays out. Uh, for all, all ranks above 3,000, mini levels will be divided by three, rounded up. For example, a level seven, a level seven mini in your collection will be level three in PvP. All right, so this was one of those things that they needed to find a way to balance out in PvP. And um, before. Um, mini levels were kind of confusing because you could level up the mini but the, um, it didn't matter because the mini was always going to be level one except for minis that come from talents and mini and or levels that come from talents and levels that come from your army grid if you don't understand that take a look at my other uh, warcraft rumble videos and you can see there's gold gold lining on certain spots and silver and bronze and it, it's it's all kind of confusing and the only reason why you'd look at it is you're curious but the system seems to be constantly changing anyways um, pvp is getting improvements always wanted pvp progress to impact some pvp but also want to make sure that power gap between players is expressed less than pvp all right additional changes final art in base towers have new art army upgrade slots can now be re-rolled for 50 coins uh, that's that um, is awesome all right so what one what one of the things is those army upgrade slots you would you were given the option to choose um, those army upgrade slots and put it into your army unfortunately sometimes that slot like your three choices were all bad like you're like i don't want any of these choices but you're kind you were stuck with it and army upgrades made such a big impact on your on your mini stack that if you if your final choice was a bad one you you were just kind of stuck so being able to re-roll is a great 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 idea xp levels are now 1 to 20 down from 1 to 25 whelp eggs are not targetable until after they fully land okay rickery talent um, from whelps now spawns three whelps from four, all right. That was that was a really big deal. These these are more balanced changes. Uh, if you know the game, I think I was using the Rickery talent in some of my videos, and just being able to spawn four dragon whelps out of nowhere was a big deal. Big red buttons are now storable, allowing players to use them in bursts. That's nice. Big red buttons are what allow you to change um, the the grid. 
by bl blowing everything away and getting a brand brand new grid. Um, so yeah, that and but and the big red button, um, yeah, that the great idea. Many other general improvements, bug fixes, and much more. Known issues: We've looked into issues causing some players to lose their guilds at times. We are aware that some players have recently lost access. We're looking into how we can restore access to those players. All right, I'm one of those players, so hopefully, um, they will be able to do that for me. With all that said, the direction of Warcraft Rumble has changed drastically. Um, this is, I guess this will be my outro. It, it feels like the original, original intent of the game was like a very heavy PvE experience. Um, some, yeah, a very heavy PvE experience and, and limited on like if, how much you could buy your way through the game. From what I've heard, it wasn't addressed in the patch notes, but um, there are more ways to um, speed, I, I guess the, the, real, the real proper way to say it, the, there are more ways to speed up your progression through the game by using your own currency and, and doing that that way. And, and I, I think I don't have any problem with this. Um, it, it is just a speeding up progression. Now, um, I, I know it does sound like a money grab, but then again, people like it cost cost thousands of or hundreds of thousands of dollars to build or maintain a game like this, not a let alone build a game like this and support that and players have people have families to feed and all that so making money uh, on a game and that initial investment before you get a return on that money right all, all of those things um is, is is a part of capitalism so un, i'm not going to get into politics but that's just the way this works um anyways going back to that it sounds like pvp um, is going to be a, a drastic change as well. PvP almost seemed like um, almost seemed like an afterthought in the game, and now that they're adding in additional maps and trying to balance out uh, PvP a bit more with the these levels, um, it, it it makes me wonder. Like, okay, how is what's really going to go down here um, for you? For, if you guys are curious, every level when I was playing the game is about a 10% increase in hit points and damage. Now, anyone who's played like StarCraft knows that a 10% increase or even a one point increase could have a drastic, dra drastic difference. Um, example, a Zealot uh, without weapons upgrade attacking a Zergling will need three hits to attack it or one and a, or one and a half rounds. Well, once it has that one zero upgrade, it does it in one full attack and then can switch targets and do it another full attack, making it kill things twice as fast. So um, things happen similarly here where a small upgrade can make a drastic difference, but a two level or even a three level upgrade was absolutely bonkers. Um, I remember um, I have a couple videos um, use like spamming spells and getting like an additional five or six levels over um, the starting levels and just being able to walk over units um, with very very strong I think the blood mage Thanos was the name of the mini if you want to take a look at any of those videos but yeah pvp getting revamped and trying to actually become balanced um, so balancing pvp that is going to be curious to me um, the maps on PvP do change. So what is effective one week is not going to be effect or one season is not going to be effective the next season as the type of towers, the type of damage they do um, are changing as well. So these are all important things to look at, keep track of. And well, I hope you guys enjoyed my rundown and breakthrough. That was a 25 minute of me, a talking head looking through the notes, giving you my thoughts. If you guys have any questions, uh, definitely put them in the comments below. Um, I'll probably be addressing those questions for the next, uh, for the next couple of weeks. Hope, you know, if you're watching this in 20, uh, you know, 2024, I may not get to your question, but yeah, leave questions below. I'll, I'll do my best to answer them and hopefully I'll be able to gain access to, um, to the beta again, er, 
you know, or, or their soft launch and be able to really see how it feels. And they changed a lot of the, as I said, game behind the game. And with that change, there is um, a lot to test out. And a lot of that is just that that feel, like is the progression good? Is there, um, do, does it make me want to play more? Like it's, it's rewarding me and encouraging me. All right, until next time, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys see me again.